Hey there everybody, my name is Mark Craw. I am a business owner in Cape Town and I am 32 years old, I'm turning 33 at the end of the year. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about a project that I am going to be starting that I'm hoping will end in success over the next couple of months. And the idea behind this really is to try and inspire young people, schools, universities, anybody that's got a passion for this, to drive it further than what I ever can. And I think that as a country, as a city, we are so far behind the rest of the world with this particular topic that it really disappoints me, it really makes me sad for the future and I'm hoping that we can change this. So, a little bit of context here. Over the last couple months, we've been going through a lockdown and we are still to a certain degree in that lockdown, but we got to witness a pretty historic moment where the first private company, um, the first commercial the first astronauts to make it to the International Space Station from a private company, which was SpaceX, um, was successful. So there were two astronauts that took off from a Dragon capsule on a Falcon 9 rocket, took off from Cape Canaveral and made it to the International Space Station and they were able to dock successfully. Now this is, this is significant because it is the first time astronauts have used uh, private a private company to do this. Previously, they would have either had to go the route of the space shuttle uh, years ago when it was still in operation, or they would have had to go with a Russian space uh, capsule, um, which is obviously quite expensive and requires a bit of process. So, um, and that's also government funded. So, the fact that it's done from a private company is really significant. So, it started me off on this hobby of thinking. You know, the, the achievements that they are doing is, is so mind-bogglingly incre incredible. You think of, of, of sending a rocket up into not just space, but orbit, and bring it back down to Earth autonomously, land itself vertically on either a drone ship or somewhere at the, uh, at the actual launch site. And the science behind that, the, the maths behind it, the, the planning, the amount of times you need to fail in order to get that right is really incredible. And this started me out on a bit of a, of a, of a research journey to think to myself, well, I am based in Cape Town, uh, South Africa, and I have got a real passion for rockets or for the idea of being able to travel into space. I am a massive fan of science fiction. I love Star Wars, I love Star Trek. Um, I'm, I would classify myself as a hybrid geek. I don't fit into that category, but I, I consider myself technically minded. I started a software company. I love all things technical. I love to, to solve problems in my mind, and if I can do it practically, then I try and do that. What drew me to this was the cool factor of it. To, 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 to watch a rocket launch or to hear the, the rocket take off is something that not many people get to experience. I've seen one rocket launch in my life and it was by sheer luck. We happened to go to a launch on a day that happened to have um, great weather and we were fortunate enough to see a, a, sh a shuttle launch, uh, a space, um, a satellite launch and it was really incredible. And watching SpaceX do this live over YouTube just made me wonder what is the scene in South Africa like? Do we, do we firstly have a space program? Do we have a, uh, a, a following of, of passionate people that enjoy launching model rockets or hobby rockets? Do we have programs for universities to compete against each other to see who can launch into space? Um, you know, what is the scene like? So I started researching this and I realized that there really wasn't much out there. And when I say not much, there's absolutely nothing. Um, as a continent, Africa, the, the record for a hobby rocket is 10 kilometers. Now, 
I'm not taking anything away from those guys. That is an incredible accomplishment. But in the greater scheme of things, 10 kilometers is, is absolutely nothing. I, I, was, I was left rather disappointed that that is as high as any African built rocket has ever gone. And I realized that to get higher than that or to reach the Kármán line of what is defined as the, the, the beginning of space is, is 100 kilometers roughly above sea level is, is not so much a technical problem as what it is, it's more of a money problem. So you need to stop throwing money at it in order to build a more powerful rocket, in order to make it larger, burn longer, and actually get to that point. To get into orbit is a whole nother story. You need to be able to manage thrust vectoring and you be able, need to be able to, to get to, um, you know, twice that height at least, or that altitude at least, to, to be able to classify as orbit. But what got me really disappointed was that there's really just no way for anybody that's interested in this to be able to easily purchase a model rocket and launch something at their closest park. And the reason why that's so significant is if you look at what's available in other countries, there are kids going to parks doing this every weekend. There is a structured plan for SpaceX and the United States to colonize the moon and Mars using rockets. And this isn't science fiction. This is something that they're planning to do in the next 10, 20 years to, to, to launch the first people to Mars. And as a, as a continent, as a country, as a, as, a, as, a, as a person that lives in this country, I'm, I'm, I'm left feeling that we're 100 years behind. And I don't wanna be stuck in a, in a culture where the rest of the world is launching rockets, going to other worlds and expanding their scientific horizons where we are left wondering what the next great app is. It's just, it's so irrelevant and I feel that something needs to change. And I realized that in a country that is riddled with a lot of problems, corruption, poverty, starvation, homelessness, there are a lot of other problems that one needs to solve first. But I think that if we can start to inspire people to think bigger, if we can inspire a child, a teenager, somebody in school, somebody in university to, to want to expand their knowledge, to think of how am I going to do this? I want to build a rocket or I want to study engineering so that I can go and work for a company like SpaceX or Blue Origin or NASA, whatever that might mean in the future, to, to think to themselves that it's not beyond their realm of possibility, that all it really takes is a little bit of thought, a little bit of determination, and with the right knowledge and the right questions, they can actually get there. So I come from zero, uh, I do not have any background in engineering in the physical sense. Um, I come from a software background, so my knowledge in building stuff with my hands is little to none. But I figure that if I'm going to try and do this, I'm gonna to have to make an example and prove that it's not that difficult to do. When I watched the African record for the rocket, my goal was to break that, which means to break the 10 kilometer um, record. And doing so relatively cheaply to prove that it can be done. And when I, when I spoke to, to my family about it, the, the answer was, well, why are you wanting to do this? Because really all it is is, you know, it costs money. And if you've got the money, you can build it and you can do it. So the idea is not any more to do that, but rather to document my experience in going from knowing absolutely nothing about rockets to being able to launch something. Um, and even if it doesn't get to the point of, of breaking that record to show that going to your hardware store and buying the stuff simply and cheaply, as cheaply as possible, um, that this can be done. So my goal is to, to do this via video. I'm going to document myself building a model rocket from absolute nothing, from stuff that I can buy at the shop and trying not to blow myself up or blow an appendage off will be first prize. Second prize will be to 
to actually see it take off. So I'm gonna document all of that. There are a number of challenges with this. Firstly, I don't know anything about chemistry, which you kind of need to know a little bit if you're going to be making rocket fuel. There are a number of ways that you can get around that. You can buy actual model rocket motors. Um, however, you have to import them and they cost a lot of money and you use them once and then that's it. Um, I want to show the actual science hacking behind it. I want to be able to show and prove to you that you can do this at home, you can do this as a school project, and if at the end of this there is a school or a university that says to, the, to me, you know what, we're going to launch a program, we're going to let these kids or these students go into this, those that are interested, they want to learn a little bit about model rocketry or the, you know, they want to take it a bit further and they want to start building rockets that actually get some serious altitude, then I've, I've, I'll be super happy. That'll, that'll make this entire thing worth it. Um, I have done a little bit of research. Um, I've grouped it into certain categories of what I'm going to need to do first. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to have to figure out what I need. Um, I know that I'm going, to, I'm going to need some kind of launch pad to actually stabilize my rocket to, to be able to take off and I'm going to have to build that from scratch um, because that's part of the challenge. I have to go and buy some stuff as cheaply as possible that you can get any hardware store, put it together and I'm going to show you how I do that. And building on that, I'm going to build a really small scale rocket that that can take off and in order to do that i'm going to have to make a slow burning fuse and i don't know how to do that so i'm going to research how to do that and i'm going to do it and i'm going to document it and i'm going to make a video of it and i'm going to show you how to do it so that you guys can maybe do it as well and you know i'd like to see if if i can accomplish that if i can get a a phase one really small rocket to launch, which I've never done before. I've never seen it been done before. I've never seen a model rocket in any hobby shop before. Um, if I can do that, I think I can make it a little bit bigger and a bit bigger and go a bit higher and a bit higher. And ultimately, if I can if I can hit that 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 ten kilometer mark, then I will be I'll be pretty impressed. I think I will be surprised that I I was able to do it. But I think building on that, we can, we can hopefully start to encourage universities to maybe compete against each other and do this. I don't wanna be in a country that is 100 years behind countries that are doing this every day. I don't want to, I don't wanna be cleaning the spaceships one day when they are building them. I wanna be the country that builds our own rocket that can go into orbit and i know it's a money problem but i know that we have private companies that can fund this i know that the money's there and i know it's not as expensive as what people think it is so that is my task that is my challenge that is what i'm going to be doing over the next couple of weeks and months um, we've just gone into july of 2020 and we're going to see how this goes i'm going to hopefully upload some videos over the course of the next couple of days couple of weeks documenting the building of the launch pad, documenting how I make the slow burning fuse, documenting how I build the, or put together the actual rocket fuel using um, basic chemicals like potassium nitrate. And I'm going to set off a really small rocket that hopefully doesn't blow up the moment I ignite it, and hopefully it gets a little bit of altitude and then I can, my, software brain tells me that I can then take that and iterate it and make it bigger and higher and faster. We'll see what goes wrong, we'll see what goes right, and hopefully it'll be a, an awesome journey. So if you have any ideas or if you'd like to be a part of this, if you'd like to do it with me, if you'd like to do it by yourself and document it and share it with me, please do. Um, I really encourage that. So that's what it is. See you guys later.